On the night of April 25th to 26th in the year 1986, humanity witnessed the occurrence of the worst disaster in the history of civilian nuclear facilities. Not only the Soviet Union, but the entire continent of Europe found itself enveloped by an enormous radioactive cloud. Regardless of how much the Soviet government tried to conceal the magnitude of the Chernobyl nuclear power plant accident, the devastation was so immense and evident that they eventually had no choice but to acknowledge the truth. Perhaps you are aware of this event from the HBO series, and we have also covered this accident several times before. Hello, everyone! But today, we would like to unravel another mystery surrounding Chernobyl. Welcome to our channel, everyone! Today, we will be discussing a terrifying object that still lurks beneath the Chernobyl sarcophagus. So, let's get started! Elephant's Foot Please take a look at this photograph. This picture was taken in 1996 and is preserved in the archives of the U.S. Department of Energy. Doesn't it look like a scene from a ghost movie? However, this is not a special effect. It was captured by a photographer using a slow shutter speed to get himself in the frame. As you can see, the person wearing a helmet in the photo is the photographer. This individual is Artur Korneyev, the deputy director of the shelter facility. The shelter refers to the first sarcophagus that covered Reactor 4 just 206 days after the accident. Mr. Korneyev is taking a selfie near a mysterious glowing object that looks like a giant mushroom. This is the extremely dangerous mysterious object we wanted to introduce to you, the one featured in the thumbnail. The elephant's foot is a solidified flow of lava-like radioactive material that leaked from what was once the reactor. It got its name because its appearance resembles an elephant's foot. This mass was discovered six months after the accident and quickly became a local phenomenon. Nevertheless, at that time, few people would have dared to enter the steam distribution corridor without a compelling reason. That is because the radiation levels in this area were extraordinarily high. Without special protective suits, spending just three minutes near the elephant's foot would expose you to enough radiation to cause death from radiation sickness within two to three months. Even machinery could not withstand the level of gamma radiation in this area. During the initial survey, the devices used to measure the strength of the gamma radiation field failed after exceeding their limits. These devices were designed to handle up to 3,000 Röntgens per hour. So, the engineers mounted more powerful sensors onto a children's toy horse and pushed it into the suspicious room. When they finally measured the radiation levels, the reading showed an astounding 14,500 Röntgens per hour. The elephant's foot had thus revealed its terrifying power. Composition of the elephant's foot A cart carrying a drill was brought in, but the material was so hard that the drill was useless. A cart carrying a drill was brought in, but the material was so hard that the drill was useless. Additionally, near this several ton mass of strange substance, no electronic device would function properly. Therefore, researchers became increasingly determined to obtain a sample of this material. A volunteer helper was found who would use an axe to chip off a piece of the solidified lava. However, this attempt also failed, and the volunteer soldier was exposed to a massive dose of radiation, forcing him to evacuate from Chernobyl. Even Thor with his mythical hammer might not have succeeded in this task. The problem was ultimately solved by a sniper, who shot armor-piercing bullets into the object, managing to obtain a sample for analysis. The analysis revealed that the elephant's foot is composed of a mixture of uranium and zirconium compounds, along with iron, chromium, and nickel, as well as oxides of calcium, aluminum, sodium, magnesium, silicon, and other compounds. Additionally, 
Crystals of a highly radioactive mineral called Chernobylite were discovered in this lava, though no one would want to make rings or necklaces from it. Corium How and why did the molten lava of the Chernobyl nuclear power plant come into existence? The fuel of this nuclear power plant consisted of uranium dioxide pellets, which were inserted into zirconium fuel rods. These rods containing the fuel are referred to as fuel elements. With these fuel elements, a controlled nuclear reaction takes place, but in Reactor 4 of the Chernobyl power plant, this reaction went out of control. While radioactive ash began to be released into the air, something even more terrifying was happening inside the reactor. In some areas, the temperature exceeded 2,600 degrees Celsius, causing one-third of the reactor core to melt into a mass within seconds. The fuel rods melted, and the entire mass flowed to the bottom of the reactor. Over the next eight days, this lava flowed out of the damaged reactor, interacting with everything it came into contact with, including the serpentine protective insulation shield, concrete, sand, and other materials. It was truly a river of fire, reaching temperatures as high as 2,255 degrees Celsius. For comparison, the temperature of normal volcanic lava rarely exceeds 1,200 degrees Celsius. Pure iron melts at 1,650 degrees Celsius, and the temperature required to melt steel is even lower. This kind of lava, formed by the melting of the reactor core, is called corium, derived from the English word core. Before the Chernobyl disaster, corium had only been formed once outside of a laboratory environment. That was during the Three Mile Island nuclear accident, but in that case, all 19 tons of lava remained inside the reactor. In the Chernobyl accident, radioactive lava leaked from the reactor, spread across the floor of the reactor room, and entered the suppression pool. And that's where the real problem arose. Legendary Feet The suppression pool is a tank filled with water where excess steam from the reactor is discharged in case of an emergency. Imagine what would happen if the heated corium entered this water. The water would instantly turn into steam, causing a massive explosion. If that had happened, the situation would have become even more dire. This issue was understood immediately after the accident, and three individuals donned diving suits and headed to the flooded area beneath the reactor. Now hailed as heroes of Ukraine, plant workers Boris Baranov, Valery Baspalov, and Alexei Anonenko moved through the partially submerged power plant to open the gate valves and drain the water from the suppression pool. They worked in the dark, with only two dosimeters and protective masks that offered minimal protection against radiation. Just imagine the courage it took to go beneath the reactor where radioactive lava was flowing. Fortunately, the passages were intact, so they had no issues moving through. The water in the problematic area reached knee height, but the valves were not broken. The three men opened the gate valves and successfully evacuated from the danger zone. The dosimeters they carried did not detect lethal levels of radiation, which was a stroke of luck. There were areas in the same room that showed extraordinarily high radiation levels. Contrary to the frightening urban legend that they died, all three continued to work on the accident cleanup for a long time. Alexei Anonenko and Valery Baspalov are still alive today. Fate of the Elephant's Foot The feats of those involved in the cleanup were not just random acts. This became clear six months after the accident when a six square meter elephant's foot was discovered in the area of the suppression pool. Initially, it was thought to be molten lead. This assumption was made because lead had been poured into the reactor to mitigate the damage immediately after the accident. However, it was determined to be 11 tons of corium, which continues to undergo radioactive decay while emitting heat. As a result, the elephant's foot is slightly warmer than its surroundings. Over time, 
the elephant's foot has lost its solidity and begun to crumble, turning into a mass of sand. Nevertheless, it is still not advisable to approach the elephant's foot. This is because being near it for just 500 seconds could expose you to a lethal dose of radiation. This mass will continue to emit gamma rays for another 100,000 years. Therefore, it was a good decision to cover the elephant's foot and the entire reactor building with a new sarcophagus that cost 2.15 billion euros to construct. Considering only the cost, it is a significant amount, but from a safety perspective, it is a small price to pay. Incidentally, the new sarcophagus, called the confinement structure, is the largest movable land structure in the world. This enormous project was realized in the aftermath of a colossal disaster. Today, we have shared with you the terrifying object lurking beneath the Chernobyl sarcophagus. Did you enjoy it? If you did, please give it a thumbs up and share this video with your friends. We look forward to seeing you in the next video. See you again. Goodbye.